What's up, YouTube, and welcome to Travel Adventures with Eric B. I'm Eric B., and today we're going to talk about 12 things that you should know before traveling abroad. Let's go. First thing you should know before traveling abroad is things tend to be smaller. And I can say this from my own experience traveling to some European countries. And I haven't been to Asia yet, but I know in some Asian countries this is also very true. Ten things tend to be tightly spaced a lot smaller. Hotel rooms tend to be smaller. Clothing that you buy in stores tend to be smaller. I learned that firsthand in Europe also. And, and you got to remember this when you're staying somewhere and you got smaller beds and smaller places, it may be a good idea if you need something bigger facilities to maybe book Hilton's or American chains where things tend to be bigger. Your food portions and things like that will also be smaller. America tends to do things bigger than other countries. Second thing you should know before traveling abroad is you should know the baggage allowance. I find that every carrier is different in baggage allowance. Most American carriers do 50 pounds or 23 kilograms. When you fly to a lot of these, especially the low cost carriers in Europe, a lot of them go down to 20 kilograms, which is 44 pounds. So that's a major problem if you fly out the U.S. and say American, a Delta, or pretty much every American carrier that goes out of the country and you bring 48 pounds, for example. All of a sudden, those 48 pounds are going to be 4 pounds overweight when you get on a low price, price carrier. And that 4 pounds overweight weight can cost you well over a hundred and something dollars this happened to me as my baggage was about three pounds overweight on a european flight and it cost me over eighty dollars almost ninety dollars so keep that in mind make sure you check before you fly third thing you should know before traveling abroad is you may need to get travel insurance you should also know that you need travel insurance because a good friend of mine here on YouTube, he went to Germany and got injured, but fortunately he had travel insurance and his travel insurance took care of him. But if you go abroad and something happens, it doesn't matter what your medical insurance is, it's not going to take care of you in another country. So you need to get travel insurance. You can get travel insurance for a reasonable pr price. You can pay maybe 40 to $50 and it'll insure you for accidents that happen there you know situations you might have to pay out of pocket but they will re reimburse you on things like that so if you slip down on a mountain you slip on a rock something happens there's travel insurance will take care of you whether it's right away or reimburse you in the future but you definitely should get travel insurance if you're going to travel abroad especially for an extended period of time the next thing you should know is you should at least have some idea of the different airlines within the alliances. So, example, there's three major alliances, the Star Alliance, the Sky Team, and the One World. So, if you're interested in flying to Egypt or Turkey or India or those places, keep in mind some of those airlines, they align with Star. So, you might want to be in the United program, have a United credit card, because if you do, you can do Air India and you can do Turkish Air and you can do also airlines like Egypt Air because they align together and you can transfer points. So you might want to be with the Sky Team if you're in Delta and you're someone that's interested in going to France because it's KLM and Air France is in that program. And One World with American, you might want to be an American Airlines program if you're interested in maybe doing British Airlines or Airwaves or doing Japan Air. So you need to have an idea of when you make a decision, decide which alliance you're going to align yourself with and program. The next thing you should know is about the travel restrictions. Now, we live in a day and age right now with the pandemic still running wild and not going away. You should definitely know that each place has different restrictions. And there's many countries that for years they've been offering shots and places in Asia and Africa and places that you have to go to to have certain shots and certain documentation. So before you go anywhere abroad, you should definitely look up, see maybe you might need a visa to get into certain places. There's a lot of different requirements out there for certain places. So just don't think that you can just go somewhere and just be there without checking out all of the restrictions and what it takes to get there. And I used to think you can just go to Australia, but you can't just go there, believe it or not. The sixth thing that you should do before you travel abroad is one thing that you can't do enough of, and that's research. 
sort of piggybacking off about the restrictions a little bit again. But when you do your research, you pretty much knock number five out because you'll find out if you need any vaccines or if you need any this or you need that as far as restrictions is concerned when you do your research. But research is much deeper than that. You also need to do research on your destination as far as the weather and things like that because if you're going to go somewhere and it's really cold a certain time of the year, maybe warm this time of the year. You can't just go off of a one size fit all box because certain parts of the world, you know, you may think of this place as being a warmer place or a hotter climate. You know, you may go to may go to the wrong time of the year and it might be the rain season. So you really have to do your research on each destination before you go there to see what you what to expect, what to bring as far as clothing and all. The next thing you should do is you should notify your bank. You should definitely notify your bank in advance so they can know where you're going to go and where you're going to be using your card so you don't get somewhere and your bank card, your debit, your credit, whatever your card is, gets shut down there and then you can't use it and you're in a tough predicament at that point. It's happened to a lot of people, so make sure you notify your bank. Some banks will automatically let you use it without issue and they may send you a message later, but some may not let you use it at all. So make sure you notify them in advance and let them know hey i'm going abroad the next thing you should know before you travel abroad is it really helps you to be flexible and when i say that it really helps to be flexible so when you when you get abroad and you pay to get there you get to europe asia wherever it's a lot cheaper to go from place to place it's not like the u.s where the u.s is one massive country in particular in europe so you can find all types of deals most of these deals are going to be the flexible type deal where hey you can book this flight on the spur of the moment if you book it right now you might get it for 40 50 dollars and it might be $200 if you bring your bag. So being flexible may mean, you know, you might want to just bring a book sack only, which is a goal of mine to be able to take a trip to Europe with only a book sack. And you may, you know, bring bring a little bit of clothes you can just change out of, wash while you're on the road, do that sort of thing and be flexible to be able to take flights at the drop of a hat. So being flexible really helps you when you're traveling abroad, getting the right flights, the right situation. So if you want to be able to go to many places to be able to change at the drop of the hat, you definitely want to be flexible. The next thing you should know before traveling abroad, I say, is the language. And this really goes back to researching because there's so many countries you can go to and not really know a tap of the local language. Iceland is being one of those because the vast majority of the people there speak English, but it's not the same in every country. And it just sometimes it depends on the community you go in. If you go in a community in Iceland, Probably with mostly older people, you may run into a lot of folks who don't speak English. They may only speak Icelandic, so you may have a harder time. If you're around mostly tourists in tourist areas, chances are they're going to speak English because English is sort of becoming a world language when it comes to tourism. So you have to you do have to know that. You have to know the area that you're in. And if you're in a rural area, a rural vacation in Europe, Asia, where knowing a little bit of the language of the local you know the simple way to say hi hello bye and things like that will always endear yourself to the locals even if you don't fully speak their language usually if you're trying you know they'll 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 really like the fact that you try usually they'll laugh and go right back to speaking english to you the tenth thing that you should know is you should know the local customs so you go into certain countries, it's not like the U.S. In the U.S., we tip 15 to 20 percent. But when you go to certain other countries, they may tip less. Some countries may not tip at all, only if you want to tip. So you should know these type of customs before you go there. Just like people from Asia and uh, Europe and places complain about coming to the U.S. and the tipping culture here. But before you come here, you should know the tipping culture so you don't find yourself in a situation where... You come to the U.S. and you tip 5 and 10 percent because that's what you tip in your country and you look like a cheapskate. So make sure you know the customs beforehand. Also, with that being said, certain gestures, certain words, certain things that are OK in one country aren't OK in another one. You should research some of these. It's also important to make sure you have your necessary paperwork 
and extra copies. And when I say that is you're going to bring your passport and you're going to bring an extra copy of your passport. You might want to have it on your phone. You might want to have a physical paper copy. You may want to have these things just in case something happens. You also want to make sure you have a return flight book paperwork so you can show that to them because whenever you travel abroad, they're going to want to know your next destination. They're going to want to make sure that you're going to leave their country at some point and you're going to plan to go to your. So you're going to want to have that document printed out maybe or at least have it on your phone saved somewhere but you're going to make sure you have all of your paperwork that's necessary for where you're staying and maybe have it printed out as well just in case the situation comes up where your battery dies and you don't have to pull over and fall behind in the line trying to repower your phone or whatever the situation may be but you definitely want to make sure that you have all your documents on you in a row and you may want to have extra documents. So make sure you have all of your paperwork ready, everything that you're going to need on you and ready to go. It's very critical. And the last thing I'm going to recommend you know before you travel abroad is you need TSA pre-check and you need global entry. And I know most credit cards, well, I'm not going to say most credit cards, but many travel credit cards offer it and they pay it for you for absolute free so it's a major convenience to be able to go to the airport get in and out quick using global entry and tsa pre-check i highly highly recommend the two of them together and global entry is both tsa pre-check and global entry if you get the tsa pre-check by itself you don't get the global entry so it's like 15 dollars more to get both but many credit cards pay for it so you don't have to worry about it at all but Highly, highly recommended by me. Get Global Entry TSA pre-check is an absolute must if you're a And that's all, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I ask that you please hit the like. Please hit the subscribe button. Please hit the bell notification so you can know when I have more material coming out in the future. Help us to continue to grow as a travel community. And as always, remember, live today, grow today. Tomorrow's never guaranteed. Peace. And Christmas. Merry Christmas.